Hello everybody, I'm David. And I'm Paul. And we're with thediceyreview.com. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the 2-9 player game Pit Crew by Jeff Engelstein and Stronghold Games. Pit Crew is a game that's played in teams. We want to try and make the teams as even as possible. David and I are playing a two-player game, so we will each make up a team of one. The first thing you want to do is set the board in the middle of the table like we have here, and then each team will set their race car close to them so that they can all reach the race car. And it starts out on the side that says 27 on the top. Next, each team will take their color components and place their lap marker on the one space and place their car behind the starting line. Then, each team will receive their colored action cards, and those will be shuffled, then they will receive their colored cap cards. In the first round, the engine cap card won't be used, so you can set that aside for now. Each team's other car mat will be used in later rounds, so make sure to set that somewhere close where you can access it easily. Next, the monkey wrench cards will be shuffled and placed face down next to the board. Depending on the number of teams in the game, you will either place one or two dice on the board. In a game with two teams, you'll place one die. Next, each team will draw a hand of six cards. If there's more than one player, the cards will be divided evenly between all the players on the team. Now that each team has drawn their starting hand, we're ready to play the game. So we've just completed the round setup phase, and now we're ready to move to the pit crew phase. The pit crew phase is the meat of the game, and this is going to be played in real time. So every team is going to be playing cards to try and repair different sections of their race car in real time, and whoever can do it the fastest will get to start moving around the track. There are going to be different parts of the car that need to be repaired. We have to repair four tires. We need to fill the car up with gas. And then in later rounds, we'll have to repair the engine as well. The first area of the car that we'll talk about is the tires. The way that you repair the tires is by playing four cards in sequence. You want to play a card that's one number higher or lower than the one that was played before it. Once the tire is completely repaired, you can place your cap card on it to show that that tire is done. Since all four of these cards match in color, I'll get a turbo bonus during the race phase. We'll talk more about that later. As you can see, I was able to play a 1 after the 10. There are 10 numbers on the cards, and you can wrap from 1 to 10. The next step is filling the car with gas. To do this, we simply play cards behind the car until we reach the number that's on top. So you would place cards down as quickly as you can and try and match this number exactly. If you can't match the number exactly, you may generate penalty points. And once again, when you're done placing cards in this area, you will place the cap card to show that you're finished. In addition to playing cards around the cars, players can also form a discard pile if they have cards that won't work or that they need to discard. You need to be careful with how many cards you put down here though because for every two cards you'll generate a penalty point. Play continues in this way in real time with players playing cards and drawing cards in any way they like. Players can play one card and immediately draw another card to replace it or they can play all of their cards and then draw back up to their hand limit. Players can do this however they want as long as they never draw more cards than their starting hand limit. The first team to cap every area of their car in the pit crew phase will instantly get to pick up this die and roll as many times as they possibly can, as quickly as they can, to move their car around the track. Every time a team rolls a six, they can move their car one space. This continues until the other team caps every section of their car and yells stop. Now we've moved my car a little bit around the track just to give an example of how many spaces you might move while rolling during the pit crew phase. After the pit crew phase has ended, we'll move to the race phase. In the race phase, each team will check their car to make sure that each section has been repaired correctly. You'll start with the tires, and as we had mentioned earlier, you're trying to get four cards played in sequence, and each card needs to be within one of the other. 
So in this example, I have a two to start with, and I've played a one, two, three, and two. Now these cards are all played with the same color, and you're looking at the numbers right here. So since these cards are all black, I'll get a turbo bonus. And what happens when you get a turbo bonus is you get to move your car two spaces on the track. This tire was also completed in the correct sequence with all four of the same color cards. They're all white, so I get one more turbo bonus to move two spaces. Now these tires, I messed up a little bit because I rushed. So in this example, I start with an eight, I have a nine, eight, seven, and five. Now since there's more than one number between these two, I'll generate a penalty point for that. And that's going to allow each other team's car to move forward one space. In this example, I was able to complete the sequence correctly. I have a seven, six, five, and a four, but the colors on the cards were different, so I'll receive no turbo bonus for that. When checking the gas tank, you want to try and compare against the number on the top. I was able to get 26 points right here, so I'll generate one more penalty for that and move David's car by one. Once again, since the colors in this stack were different, I won't receive a turbo bonus for this section. The last thing to mention is my discard pile. You're going to receive one penalty point for every two cards in your discard pile. Since I have three, that will generate one more penalty point. My car will score in the same way as Paul's. I took a little bit more time and I was able to complete it pretty accurately. That's how Paul got ahead in the beginning. But since I did take that extra time, I was able to generate four turbo bonuses and I didn't get any penalty points because I was worried about crashing. If you ever receive eight penalty points in a single round, your car crashes and you're eliminated from the game. A couple of quick things to mention about movement. If a player's car ever passes the starting line, their cube will move up one space on the lap track. If a car would ever end its movement in a space where there is already another car, the car entering the space will be placed on the outside edge of the space. It's important to note that there's no limit to the number of cars that can be in a single space. The order of cars from inside to outside could be important during the end game in case of a tie. After resolving the cars, each crew will gain a monkey wrench card. Draw a number of monkey wrench cards equal to the number of crews and place them face up. Each crew gets to take one of the cards in reverse order of standing. So the crew in last place selects first. In this example, since my car is on the outside, I'm in last place, so I can select my card and then David gets to select his. Monkey wrench cards are kept by the crew from round to round and may be reused each round. So in round three, each team is going to have two monkey wrench cards to use. Monkey wrench cards can help you in a variety of ways. Some of them give you a passive bonus, or they could be played on your car to complete sets more efficiently. Some cards might even sabotage other players or give you bonuses during the race phase. To prepare for the next round, Teams will gather all of the action cards from around their cars and shuffle them to form a new deck for the next round. The teams will also gather the cap cards needed. And remember, for the second round, we will also need to repair our engines. So we'll put this cap card in the stack as well. Each team will also need to keep any monkey wrench cards that they've gained within easy reach to be played during the round. You'll need to flip over the car mat to the side that says 29 on the top, and then place all dice back in their spaces. Next, each player will draw up to their hand limit and will be ready to start the second round. The only difference with this round is that our fuel tanks will require more fuel and we have to repair our engine this time as well. When repairing the engine, you have to place down a pair that matches. So for instance, two fours or two sixes. One card can be played and then the pair can be completed later. So for instance, I could play this three and then try and add another three at a later time. Once again, if the cards are played with the same color, you will generate a turbo bonus. In round three, the 31 car will be used and this car requires two pairs to be completed. Once again, the fuel level has increased. These pairs can be the exact same numbers. So for instance, you could put down four fours or four twos, or they can be different. 
a two and then a four pair of those. And in the race phase, for each missing or incorrect card in a pair, you'll generate two penalty points. The game will end after round three is over or if all but one car has crashed. The car that has completed the most laps is the winner. And if the laps are tied, the car that's furthest along on the space is the winner. If multiple cars are in the same space and the laps are tied, the car on the inside would win. If all cars were to crash in the same round, the car that was in the lead at the beginning of that round will be the winner. 